Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Rick Uta here with Airgun Web, where we tell you the facts, not fluff, and bring you old school airgun reviews. Today's video is going to be again on the Air Venturi Woodstock Avenger. Now, last uh, last video we took a look at this. We shot it as it you know as it came out of the box. It was a great video, really nice air gun. But I know we can get more out of this, and that's what this video is about. Stay with us. Okay, so what makes the Air Venturi Avenger, whether Woodstock or synthetic, really special? Uh, it's affordable, which that's not really that important anymore because there's a lot of affordable air guns now. But what it brings to the table is a regulated platform that's user adjustable without having to take the gun apart. So that's kind of huge, okay? So the ability to tune the gun for your needs, whatever it be, whether it's hunting or plinking, you can tune the gun for what you want to do, the pellets you want to shoot, slugs you want to shoot, whatever you want to do there. You tune it the way you want it, you lock it down, and now your gun is ideal for your needs. See, that's pretty cool, and you could do that before with some very expensive guns, but now that you've got it down at a price point that's really, really affordable, the new Woodstock version is sitting at about 430 bucks right now, which is really, really a great value. Um, not gonna get into all that this gun has as far as aesthetics and build quality, because you guys can go watch the previous video for all that. Today, we're really gonna focus on how to adjust it and tune it. Now, we're working with the 22 caliber, and, and the 25, you know, you, you need more pressure to push that heavier slug to really get it to zing down there. And a 22 though, you don't need 3,000 PSI on the reg or 2,900 PSI on the reg. You could probably do with a lot less. Now, out of the box, it comes set with the regulator to that 2,900 PSI. So what we want to do today is uh, we're going to go ahead and shoot a couple shots. I just topped this off. I maybe shot one mag through it, um, so it's definitely still on the reg. We'll go ahead and shoot a couple shots over the crony just to see what we're getting factory. Then we're going to drain the tank because you can't reduce the pressure in the reg without emptying the gun. We're going to drain the tank and then um, go ahead and fill it all the way back up and then gradually turn the pressure back up. So I'm going to start probably around 2,000 PSI and see where we're at. It, we may be right where we are at 3,000 PSI and if that's the case, that means we're going to have a lot more shots because right now I'm getting about 30 shots and where this becomes important. So um, I've done some test shooting already kind of with the factory gun. I got it sighted in with this new scope. I'm using the Hawk Vantage wide angle side focus uh, first focal plane. Really good scope. Matches really good with this particular gun too. So um, I had done my sight in. I was probably about 25 shots into the string and I started shooting and at the end of my uh, my end of my mag, you could just see the group open up. I'm thinking, come on, I just shot a group, of course it wasn't on camera, that was the size of my pinky. So I know something was going on. Sure enough, I'd kind of fallen off the regulator. So, you know, if you start at 4,300 and your regulator's at 2,900 and you have a small air cylinder, that's actually not a lot of volume uh, for a lot of shots. I mean, that's 25, 30 shots, solid, good shots. But what if you could get 50 shots? And I don't know what we're gonna get, but that's sort of the point of this video. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and set the crony up. We'll take a couple shots over the chronograph, just in the, the you know default setting, um, just so we know what we're getting. Now we're shooting 18.13s. So I'm thinking if you know if we can dial this in to um, maybe like 930, 940, maybe ideal. I forget now where we were shooting in our original video, but we're gonna find out really shortly because I'm gonna grab the chronograph set it up and then we're gonna do some testing so stay with us I think this will be a fun video we dial this thing in be right back okay so we got 18 ones it won't let me put one three in there that's right 18.13 here let's send a couple over the chronograph and see what we're getting and then we'll detune it and see what it takes to get up to that number uh, without having to go over 937. Okay, so 1813s doing 937. That is 35 and some change foot pounds. Let's just roll through this mag here. 944. 942-933-938. 
933. 943. 937. 936. Okay. Let's see. If I look at the numbers here, um, average is 938. Extreme spread was 11 and a standard deviation of 4. Um, that's pretty good. I mean, I've seen better, but that's uh, realistically at 50 yards, that's not going to impact your shot placement at all. Uh, that's going to be dead nuts. Now at 100 yards, that does that four foot per second variance may play in if we're talking about like one inch accuracy, but in general, very, very solid performance. All right, so what we need to do now is go ahead and drain the gun and get it set up to do, uh, to reset the rack, okay? So it's pretty good. Most we got was 35, seven, four foot pounds, which is pretty stout. Okay, let's see what we got here. So on the back, or underneath I should say, you've got, um, you've got two ports here. One is your reg, and the other is your bleeder. And it looks like I'm gonna need a flathead screwdriver. I will be right back. So first things first, let's go ahead and drain. I wonder if I could cheat this up. this. Oh yeah, that'll work. Oh, yeah, that'll work good enough. Okay. So let's see here. I'm going to go, I think this is a two and a half. Nope, it's a three. Now all the instructions on how to do this are going to be in the manual. So please read the manual and then read it again. If you have questions, Get help. Okay. Okay. Didn't take long. We're all drained. So we'll go ahead and tighten that back up. Now, on the reg, you are going to turn in the screw clockwise till the bottom's out. Now, manual says quarter turn, so definitely start there. I've had times where it needed half a turn, um, and since I know that I'm going to need more than the minimal, I'm going to go go ahead and do a half a turn. Um, but if you, you know, with the new gun, um, never done it before, stick and do exactly what the manual says. So I've bottomed out the reg, screwed it all the way in, and then I've come out. We'll say quarter turn, but I've come out half a turn. Um, and now we're going to fill the gun back up. Now, this is a, a topic that I've gotten into a little bit of discussion with folks on um, about the need of a compressor. Personally, uh, if you're gonna have a gun that you tune a lot, and this is something you're gonna be doing on a regular basis, I would absolutely invest in a personal compressor. Um, there are a lot of great options on the market. If you have under $1,000, Air Venturi, uh, which is Pyramid Air sponsoring this video, Air Venturi has the Nomad 2, great little compressor. If you have a little bit more to spend, and you want something that's just gonna fill your guns, you want it to be super reliable, fast, smart, all of those things, take a look at the hill. It is by far from a just sitting in my shop filling air guns perspective. That's my favorite compressor. I have lots of options available to me, but this is the one I go to. It is just that good. It just is really, really a great option. Okay, so the way the compressor works is you turn it on, it immediately asks you, is, do you have lubricant in there? So that's cool, so you are forced to check that. Uh, it has an hour meter, which will actually shut down and says, hey, it's time to change the oil. Um, it does that automatically. It also senses when it's too hot, and it knows when to shut off, and it actually will stop cool down and then start up without you having to bleed it yourself. It is fully automatic. So the features you get with the Hill surpass other options, frankly. It is a really great unit and it fills very quickly as compared to some of the other, um, you know, personal, you know, sub thousand dollar compressors. This one, yes, it's more than a grand. It's probably around 1200 bucks. It is exceptional. It is really, really good. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and turn it on. Make sure my bleeder's open. And yes, I have lubricant. 
Now it's going to ask me to set the desired pressure. This fills the 300 bar. Our Air Venturi uh, Avenger takes 300 bars. So if you have a gun that needs th like 310 or 4500 PSI, unfortunately this isn't going to do it for you. But the Avenger and this perfectly matched. Really, really great combo. So we'll push the button. We'll set our pressure to 300 bar. Push the button again to set it. And we'll hit start. And we'll just see how long it takes. It shouldn't take long. Close the bleeder. And away you go. <clears throat> OK. All right. So what happened with the compressor is there are a couple cool down cycles. It's about 90 degrees out here right now. So you can imagine if this needed to cool down, another compressor that doesn't know that, it's not smart, it will just keep running. What happens to the longevity of that compressor that doesn't know it needs to take a break? Now that filled this from complete zero up to 300 bar, and I'll put however much the time is, including the brakes. Even though this does take a break, you think, oh, that's slower. When I've compared this to other compressors that don't take a break, it, it's actually still faster. So even though it pauses in between uh, fill se uh, sessions, it's still actually faster than what I've found from most other small portable compressors. Uh, other than like the big Air Venturis, okay? Those are much faster. But on the personal portable bench size compressors, guys, I know I've said a lot, this is my favorite. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Okay, let that go ahead and cool down on its own now. Now let's go ahead and put some pellets over the crony. And uh, let's first of all, let's take a look at where our pressure's at. We are right at about 2,000 PSI, probably about 1,900, I'm thinking. We'll go ahead and start a new crony string and then uh, just see what we get. Again, our target here is going to be about 930. So that's what we're shooting for. So let's just see what we're getting out of this mag here. And let's see if the consistency is any different. Oh, you know what we need to do first, though? Let's clear the plenum. Okay. When you fill up that first time, you need to clear the plenum so that you start with a clean, full, properly regulated, good to go starting point here. Okay. Other thing when you're shooting over a chronograph, uh, or just shooting with a regulated gun in general, it takes time for that plenum to recharge. So give it a minute. I mean, don't shoot super fast. Give it a few seconds to, to fill up again. All right, let's see. We should be good right there. 861. Okay, so we're definitely slower. Let's sh just shoot a couple here. 849. Way lower, okay. 846. Okay. That first shot may have been a bit of an anomaly. Let's see what we keep getting here. 845. Yeah, okay. So let's do this. I think that first one was just still things settling out. I'm going to delete that one. It'll give us a more accurate look at what this setting is like. 847. Yeah. 841 837 837 833 842 Okay. Put one more down. Okay, let's see how this did. The other one had an extreme spread of 11 with a standard deviation of 4. This has worse, uh, an extreme spread of 16, standard deviation of 5. Okay, so <clears throat> higher pressure seems to do better in the sense of consistency, but we're not where we want to be velocity wise, so we definitely need to come up. All right, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to take this. 
and we're going to watch our gauge here and we are going to counterclockwise turn our reg and watch the gauge as it comes up. We want to stop at about 23. All right, so I'm at two right now. Give it a minute to kind of collect itself. 21. That looks like about 23. It's really hard on that teeny tiny gauge to see perfectly. So we're going to go ahead and clear the plenum and then we'll shoot another uh, shot group. Um, right now we're at 3500 psi, so we should have plenty of air. Okay, all right, let's see. Now we were at uh, 8.40. Um, we started at 9.30, so we gotta come up 100 feet per second to be back where we were, so let's see here. Nine hundred twenty-nine. Okay, so right there, if this stays consistent, we may be right where we want to be. So instead of 2,900 PSI reg, we're at 2,300. So that's 600 PSI difference. Let's see how this does here. 927. 929. 930 930. Okay, so on shot seven, I, I shot a little too quickly. That's why we dropped to that 924. Kind of a good example of what will happen if you try and shoot too quickly with a regulated gun. But look at these numbers. Um, extreme spread of six, standard deviation of two. Cut it in half. So if I hadn't shanked that shot, um, that would have dropped even more. We probably would have had an extreme spread of like four. Um, and maybe only a standard deviation of maybe one. So absolutely more consistent at this power level. No, we're not 940, but we're 930, close enough. Um, and we've got, I think we're gonna get a lot more shots. So we're still over 3000 PSI now. So we probably have another mag, maybe two mags. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna top this off and give us kind of a good idea of the difference between uh, topping the gun off versus filling it from empty too with the hill compressor and then we're gonna shoot uh, An entire string on the reg to see how many shots we get before we were getting about 30 shots at like factory setting Let's see what we're gonna get now at 2300 psi. Let's go ahead and do this Nine hundred thirty four 931 929-934-938-937 
933. Okay. All right, here we go. Nine Nine hundred twenty-six. Nine hundred twenty-three. Nine hundred twenty-nine. Nine hundred twenty-five. Nine hundred twenty-seven. Okay. And we are at. 3200 psi at this point so there's two mags in 20 shots we're still over 3000 psi at this point 926 931 929 927 933 928 all right, so that's 30 shots before we'd be done. Now, we're still over 3,000 PSI. We're probably right at 3,000 PSI. That's just a fraction over. All right, so let's see what we got here. 931. 929. 927 926 928 926 Okay, so now we're 40 shots in About 2800 I think we may have just one more mag here. Let's see 928 926 922 925 923 927 Okay, so we're 50 shots in now. We are we're right there. We're actually at 2300 psi right now. Um just barely 
just barely inside the reg. Okay, so uh, we've got 50 shots. Um, we have an extreme spread of 16 feet per second on 50 shots and a standard deviation of four on 50 shots. Okay, so you can see that we didn't lose anything by turning down the pressure some. In fact, we gained a lot. Uh, we gained a lot. Uh, that is exceptional. So we know what we've got. Uh, let me just take a picture of that. Okay, so I have that data. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this next mag. We should fall off the reg here. Um, we should see it tank. Let's just see what happens here. Okay. Nine hundred nineteen. Yeah. I knew it right on it. Nine hundred nineteen. Nine hundred eighteen. Nine hundred sixteen. Nine hundred seventeen. Nine hundred eighteen. Nine hundred seventeen. Nine one one. All right. I heard that. I don't know if you guys would hear that on camera, but there was a change in the report of the rifle. Let's see what happens now. Nine one one. Nine hundred nine. Okay, you see it's really starting to drop now. Now we're at two thousand psi. I'm gonna stop. But I'll tell you that's sixty shots. I'm shooting at hundred yards just on the dirt. I'll tell you that even though we saw the velocity drop, the point of impact is the same exact as it was when we were up around 920, uh, 930. So all in all, 50 shots on the reg. If you want another 10, you got them. But let's go ahead and now let's look at accuracy. But all in all, this thing did very, very well. Very, very impressive. Let's top it off. I'll set the camera for accuracy. We'll wrap this up. Okay. Yeah, wind's coming pretty good. Okay. Okay, all right, so it's shooting a little bit left. That may be due to the breeze, it may be due to the slight change in velocity, but the group is really good. Um, let's shoot one more and then we'll wrap this up. Now, I am using the Hawk Vantage. This is the 30 mil side focus, first focal, pra first focal plane. Um, wide angle is the other thing that's got a bigger field of view. But um, if I'm looking through the scope, I am like half a mil left. So I'm gonna actually use that mil to aim dead center. And it's a half a left and just a fraction low. I'm not gonna try and adjust for high, you know, up and down, but I am gonna try and bring it more center. Let's see if I can do it here.
pretty doggone awesome. I'm gonna go grab that shot card. We're gonna wrap this up, be right back. Well guys, I hope you guys really enjoyed that video. It was fun to do. It was fun to see, you know, theory work out in practice because that doesn't always happen. Uh, and on paper, we, we're getting the same sort of results. So um, full out, I mean, this is what we got. Again, remember I was talking about that third, maybe it's three and a half mags. It started to kind of fly open, but look at that. I mean, that was when I topped it off. That is just, that is awesome. 50, 52 yards really. So once we've did, once we've kind of made our adjustments, realized that about 2200, I think that's where I'm sitting is at 22 or 23. I will say 2300 PSI is about where the reg's sitting right now. And we didn't lose anything really in velocity, maybe 15 feet per second, but we gained 20 shots and arguably, if you're shooting at 50 yards, you could push it to that sixth mag because we didn't really get a huge drop. You go past that, you're definitely gonna see it. But what you could also do is detune it a little further, maybe go at 2100 PSI, and now you're definitely gonna get six, maybe even seven magazines. So, I mean, it really makes a difference of, the fact that you can actually tune it really makes a difference for you guys and how you wanna shoot. So, you know, after we were done, there was my first group and I'm, it's, you know, if I put a mic on it, it's probably just a fraction bigger than that one, but this one's really an exceptional group. And then this one, I used the kind of the mill dot to adjust, had one kind of get away from me, but again, same similar size. Of course, these groups, we had the wind blowing, unlike the first groups, which was really dead calm. So. I mean, this is what makes the Air Venturi Avenger so special. The new Woodstock, for me, really just takes this thing up, not one step, but several steps into a gun that you can just go out and just enjoy shooting, whether it's bench shooting or out in the field, you're gonna get a lot of, just a lot of use out of this gun. Price point, 430 bucks, at least today. Um, it would be a value at $650, I'm just saying, this gun, really outperforms or performs way above its price point. And the fact that you can dial it in, get it to do what you want it to do, I think is awesome. Guys, this one's going back to Pyramid Air now, so say bye. But hopefully we'll have some coming in shortly and we'll be able to do some more with these guns. That's what I'm hoping to do. But this one's gotta go back home. So we're gonna say bye to the Air Venturi 22 Cal Woodstock for now. Guys, thanks so much for watching. My name's Rick Kutzer here with Airgun Web, where we tell you the facts, not fluff, home of your old school airgun reviews. Thanks for watching.